Hey, I am John Barker, and welcome to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. Now, in this episode, we're going to do things a little bit fun. We're going to take a look at ATEM macros. First of all, I'm going to show you how to create a simple macro, but then we're going to dump, jump right into how to access the XML file that you save all your settings of the macros. I'm going to show you where you can copy paste a few examples that I've created, some simple macros and some a little more advanced macros. And basically you can just mix and match these things to create whatever macro you want to create. Um, I've got on the computer right now, I've got a look at the uh, ATEM software control. And in here is basically where we'll be making all of the, uh, the edits and adjustments. Um, I'm going to assume that you've made a macro before, but if not, let's just start right there. And uh, open up the macros panel, head into macros and open that up. And here's a few macros that I've created in the past for a few of my projects. But for this project, I'm just going to make one at the very end here. So I'm going to create, I'm in this create tab and I've clicked on the last one in the, uh, on the list. And I'll just hit create. And for this example, I'm just going to call this macro, um, prog prev. So program preview, I'm going to hit record. So once I hit record, a few things are going to happen. Um, I'm going to, change between some cameras and um, I'm just going to just show you how that works now. So I'll hit record and I'm going to choose the uh, close camera to go wide and I'm going to choose this screens is what I call it to be on preview. So I'll hit that and you'll see a few things happen on the um, master recording and then I can just use the um, there's a stop button in the uh, or hit that record button again just to stop the macro. So hit that again, and I'll take you back over to the screens. Now, like I say, I am actually using this ATEM to create this video, so things might jump around a little, but you can easily follow along with that. Um, so now I have my program preview macro created. I can run that actually and show you what happens if I hit on the program preview one and press this little play button. It will do what I wanted it to do, which is basically take the close uh, camera, camera one in my instance, to program, and then put uh, input number three, which I call screens, to my preview. I'm just gonna change the preview to something else for now, just so I can see a difference. And here we go, I'll press that, and it cuts to my wide shot, and you can see now that uh, close camera is on program, and the other camera is on uh, preview, simple as that. Let's head back to the computer and I'm going to show you what that looks like in the actual XML file. So I'm heading over here. Actually, first of all, I obviously need to save that. So I'll go to save as and I'll just call this show and tell. And on my desktop, I'll save that. You can save all the uh, options here, but I'm just going to select macros for, the, for this video. And then if I head back over to my desktop, now I can see that show and tell. Open it with... Uh, Adam, which is my favorite editor. And what you would see is if you created all the settings, you would see a big, big, long list of things and you'd find the macros pool at the bottom. But in my case, it's at the top because that's the only thing I saved. So I'll just go straight to the macros pool. And here you can see picture and picture left. Those are just some of the ones that I've created in the past for some other uh, jobs. <clears throat> and I'll head down to the bottom and down here I will see yeah, there we go, program preview, that's the one I just created. And if you take a look, you'll see in here that um, the options that I uh, added, so program input on mix effects zero to be camera two, that's what I call my uh, the first camera on my list, the first input, and the preview input will become camera seven. That corresponds to um, the way I have things laid out in my ATEM, it just happens to be um, the way I have them laid out. So camera two is my close-up camera, camera seven is my screens camera. So that's kind of how that works. And uh, we'll head back in, in there. And I can just show you that you can just edit these things. So if I wanted camera seven actually to be the program camera, and I wanted two to be the preview input, I can just uh, make those edits in there. I'm trying to zoom out, there we go. Hit save on that, and head back over to my ATEM software control, restore, restore that same file that I just edited and saved. Make sure macros is selected, hit restore. 
And now when I press run on this, uh, you'll see things that happen a little bit differently. Um, instead of camera two going up to uh, the program and uh, input number three being on the preview, things will change. So I'm gonna make a few changes now so you can see the difference. I'm gonna put these both uh, actually wide, close. You can see that and you can see, I'm just gonna hit run on that same macro and things have happened. Camera three, which is actually input number seven, camera seven is now on program and this one's now on preview. So basically that's just a simple way to edit your, uh, your macros within the XML file. Let's take a little deeper look now into a GitHub, a GitHub repo that I've created and you can use anything on there, just copy and paste. You'll find a link to that in the description on a blog post and you can just copy and paste those things into your XML file and then you can create whatever macro you want. Instead of having to create it through the ATEM software control, you can actually create it within the XML file. So let's head a look, head over to the, uh, the GitHub repo. Again, like I said, you'll find a link to this underneath this video um, on my uh, sort of master blog post about this whole thing. And what you'll see in here is a few things that look quite familiar. So in this instance, this is the exact same as what we saw over here. ID program input, camera seven. And uh, in this case, it just says camera five, but this is the exact same thing where you can set whatever your program input wants to be or your preview input you want it to be. And what we're gonna do now is just show you an example of how you can just copy and paste something. So I'm gonna take this auto transition, copy that, head over to the macro pool in the same one, and I'm gonna paste that in place. And now instead of doing that, uh, program slash preview change, it's now going to do an auto transition. I'm gonna change the name of this to auto. Hit save, head back to the software control. Then I'm gonna restore the same file, select it, restore, make sure that macros is selected and I can hit restore. And what you'll see any, any second now is, um, is that this will change its name because I just changed the name on the XML file, so restore and it should auto update to, yeah, there we go, to auto. So now when I run this macro, what it'll actually do is an auto transition between whatever is on pre preview and whatever is on uh, program. And uh, this is a, a good way where you can stack up a few of these things. So say you want to go from one camera to the other and set up a macro, you can set what you want to be on the preview and then you do auto transition and then it'll do that. So let's take a look. I'm gonna press play on that. Um, Transition, you can probably just about see me press and play over there and it'll do an auto transition. In this case, between my close-up camera and I will select uh, my wide camera. So I'm ready to go. I'll hit that play button once again and it'll do a nice auto transition between the two. Those are the simple sort of cut auto ways of doing things. And now let's take a little bit of a deeper look into how to put things like the upstream or downstream keyers onto a macro and make it editable that way. So if we head back into the computer and we go over to the GitHub file and here I have a down and upstream keys section and let's say I want upstream key to go on air. So I'll just take this, copy it and paste it again. I'll just overwrite that again. In this case, I want one of my key to go on air and then I want it to be an ME1 and I want it to be key zero. So something to keep in mind is that whenever you're um, setting your keys, that uh, things are on, um, this is actually zero, instead of being key one, it's actually zero, and this is one, this is two, and this is three. So everything is minus one number. So in this instance, I want my key one to go on air, which is actually called key index zero, and on air to be true. And basically what that's going to do is bring that key on air whenever I hit that, um, that macro, let's change the name of this to key on air. I like to change this name each time just so you see the difference that's happening. I'll head back over here, hit restore from that same file, restore it. And I should see the name change when I hit restore again. Yep, key on air is now what it's called, which means that I've brought in those new settings. And whenever I hit this um, and run this macro, then you'll see the key come on air. So if I hit that now, And there you go, you can see in the bottom corner um, that the key has come on air. I'm just gonna change this camera real quickly. Yeah, so now, down here, you can see that's what my key 
on air looks like. I've just set it up for like a picture in picture style sort of thing. But um, that's simply how you do it. I can take that back off again by clicking on the on air or I can set up a macro that, um, that does that. And uh, that's basically how you get keys, upstream and downstream keys on air through the macros. Just set them in that way and then they just pop up on the screen like that. And you can do a false instead of a true and that'll just take it off again. So that's that. I'll just turn that back off again so I don't make the rest of this video with the key on air. And head back to the computer. And now let's take a look at macro settings. So you can do a couple of things in macro settings, macro sleeps and macro user weights. In this instance, you just have a, yeah, a macro sleep for a certain amount of frames. So let's just copy that. And I'll bring it over here and I'll put it in before that uh, picture in picture sort of thing. And with 25 frames in each second, I'm gonna set this to 75. So it'll take me three seconds. So once I hit this key on air, I'm gonna change the name of this to new key on air just to make it different. Head back over here, file restore. And I can restore that same file. And it should change to new key on air. Yep, and the only thing that will change now is whenever I press play on this uh, ATEM macro, it'll wait three seconds before it hits that key on air. This could come in handy. Let's say you wanna set up a little sequence where it cuts to a wide shot, then it cuts to a close shot, or it cuts to a presenter's laptop screen, and then all of a sudden there's a three second wait, and then something like picture in picture pops on the screen. Just for example, you can use those macro sleeps just to, just to insert little breaks and stuff in there. So I'm gonna press play on that macro, and then we should wait for three seconds, and then hopefully it'll appear. One, two, three. I counted too fast, but there we go. That took about three seconds and the um, the picture in picture upstream key came in. So let's hit that again. One, two, three. That was a slightly slower count. And there you go, you can see how that worked on. I'm gonna take that off again and uh, move on to um, some more more custom settings that we've, uh, we've put on here. So in this advanced section at the bottom of the GitHub repo, I have what's called a custom auto transition. And this is something that we use for um, conferences and stuff. There's a video up here you can watch about how we deal with live stream breaks. But basically what we do is we use a HTML website. We feed that into our switcher and basically it has some text on it and that fades in over top of the, uh, the picture. So what people see is like a wide shot of the auditorium and then slightly transparent text that says, you know, we're on a break, we'll be back soon. Um, the way to do that is to take the T-bar and instead of bringing it from zero to 100%, we bring it from zero to 75%, and then that just makes that sort of like ghosty kind of effect. And in here, you can see that um, this same thing is uh, laid out here. So in this example, the T-bar position goes from zero to 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, and then goes to one. That's where you get a full uh, transition, but we're gonna just take, copy and paste all the way to 0 0.75 and head over to the uh, XML file. I'm gonna remove all the other stuff and paste that in there. And let's just fix the, uh, the spacing a little. And now I'm going to um, pop that one over too. Give it a new name. This one is gonna be called Slow Auto. So what I can do here is I can maybe crank things up a little so What's gonna happen is the T-bar is gonna go from its natural position, which is position zero, and um, it's gonna go position zero, it's gonna wait for one second, then it's gonna to go to position 0 0.025, wait for a second, 0 0.5, wait for a second, and then 0 0.75. And you'll see that in action in one second. I will just restore it in here and uh, the name should update, slow auto, it did. So I'm gonna just pop on this uh, wide shot and I'm gonna hit that play on there and you should see a really slow, it may look weird, but a really slow fade. So it's gonna go over time, there we go, crank, crank, crank. And that's basically how we get the ghosting effect. Now, that didn't look so good because we took a second between each step. But if you were to take, um, like in the example, a two frame break, and you were also to do, instead of, let me just take you in there so I can show you what I mean, complete that transition. Instead of going from 0, 0.0 to 0, 0.25, what we tend to do is go from 0, 0.0 to 
to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 0 0.75. And that's whenever you get like a smooth transition rather than a really, uh, a really, I wanna say like snappy one. So in that instance, that's how you can make your own custom uh, auto transition and you can let it stop whenever you want it to stop instead of going all the way through to 100%. Obviously you could set your own timing in, um, in the rate in here you can make it as slow as you want, but this example will let you actually not only set the uh, the pace of the auto transition, but you can also set where it stops. You can make it fade in, and you could fade it back out again after a few seconds, and you can kind of do whatever you want with that. Um, the final example I'm going to show you is how we take the uh, audio. Um, what we tend to do during the breaks, like I just said, is we show that picture, but we also mute the audio completely from our mixer. In order to do that, we take the master audio out and we drag it all the way down. And uh, you can do that with one full step where you take it from the top and right to the bottom. But I don't really want it to sound like uh, audio is just being completely, like someone stood on the cable and being pulled out. Instead, I do like a nice little uh, fade out and I can do that through the ATEM macros. So let's take a look at that. Over on the GitHub page, I have this uh, example here. Audio mixer master out gain and then a macro sleep like I always like to use. So let's overwrite this transition once more. And let's just drag this in a little. And we'll change this to audio fade. So basically what this number here is, this large 32768, that number actually represents the zero point on the master output and then the, the number zero represents whenever it goes all the way down here. So from this point all the way down to um, minus infinity is actually just a, a sliding scale from this larger number all the way down to zero. So with that being the case, what you want to do if you want to slowly fade out of this audio is copy and paste this a few times. Oh, I should take a space. There we go. And what we can do is lots of numbers and the more numbers you do, the, the smoother the transition should be, but the longer it may take. I will just go from this 32.7 to maybe 22,000 to 15,000, 10,000, uh, 7,500, 4,500, 4, 2,100, these are just numbers I'm making up right now, to zero. And uh, it'll take a nice little two frame sleep between each one of those steps. Save that, head back over one more time, restore. Restore this file, restore it, and the name should change to, what was it, audio fade, yeah. And if you watch very carefully now, whenever I hit play on this macro, what you will see is a nice smooth transition from, um, I did that by accident, from zero all the way down to, um, minus infinity. So I'll just press play on that. And there you go, you saw that audio as it just slid down and um, I can just pull it back up again. To There we go. I'll just show you that one more time. What it does is it just very slowly just cranks that down. So, and you can see it go there. Um, you, like I said, you can add more frames or add more steps and it'll just take it slower. It'll do a nice little audio fade out. And I like to do that at the start of a break. And I also like to do the opposite of that at the end of a break where it just takes it from zero and brings it all the way up to that number 32,000, whatever it was. And it just gives a nice little audio transition for the users or for the viewers just to not feel like a cable has been yanked and everything's broke. If it's a nice fade out, it seems like it's intentional rather than if it all of a sudden stops, it feels like something went wrong. So hopefully you find that useful. Those are just a few macros that we like to use some of the easy ones and some of the more complex ones. Um, don't be afraid to go into our GitHub, copy and paste, use all that stuff, and uh, hopefully it'll actually be useful to you. It can be an easier way to create macros than it is to jump into the Atom software and click and unclick and all that stuff. It can get a bit confusing making them through the Atom software. So if you get your head around the XML layout, then um, it can all make perfect sense. I'll see you in the next episode of Here to Record Show and Tell, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you. Bye-bye.